Alabama has exactly 32 miles of shoreline on the Gulf of Mexico, and smack dab in the middle, the town of Gulf Shores. The plan is to head 40 miles out into the deep blue, and like any offshore adventure, the possibilities of what we're going to find are endless. What I do know is that my friends and fellow captains, Rex Williams and Mike Still, have it dialed in, and the 36 Yellowfin is all gassed up. It's just a matter of getting to the spot and dropping a bait. Captain Jonathan Moss, presented by Florida Fishing Products. Boys, we're black now. You ready to run out here, Rex? I'm ready to rock and roll, boy. Let's get it. All right, Mike. All right. Good job on the bait. This nice work. Here. Nice work. We're gonna run about 30 miles. Yeah, we're gonna run about 30 miles. This is half the bottom. Do it, brother. Right. Be about there, brother. You wanna send some down to the bottom? All right. I think we sit on it. 180, 189. Yeah. There should be some vermilion snappers, and what we call white snappers. The corgis, yeah. Let me know, Rex, when you're ready. That bottom's looking better and better. All right, let's go ahead and fire them down. Let's see. How deep? 190. I'm on. I'm on. Man, 200 feet down, bro, it's a long way up. <laughs> yeah. How's your arm holding out? Doing good, man. First fish. There you Ask go. Me about an hour or so. All right, I got color. Nice trigger. Nice trigger. Nice trigger. Him burping. <laughs> <laughs> So this is a trigger fish. Check this out. That's why they're called a trigger fish. Hit that little trigger right there, and it just slides all the way down. Pretty cool. And their skin is like sandpaper, leather, tough. Really good eating fish. They get sideways and they pulling them up, man, it just makes them a whole lot more difficult to get up, but really good fish. All right, Mike, first one, baby. Nice work. Going in the box. There you go. Get on in on us. Fish on, baby. You boys up there fooling around putting bait on your hooks. We're actually quiet, brother. <laughs> you do your talking with your fishing. Yeah. Owl fish. Yeah, I'm not used to catching these tiles in 180 feet of water. Typically, we catch them deep drop in electric reels. Yeah. But beautiful fish. Beautiful fish. Get him on ice. Come join his friends. There you go. Get him. Tight. Fish on, baby. 
All right, John, you got the first two. It's gonna, you gotta get a double. You You're catching up with me. Yeah, a little bit. Oh, that's a beautiful vermilion there. Nice vermilion. Yeah, pretty fish. Rex, I'm on, brother. Oh, look at you go. Good job. Hold them, hook, hold them. Nice vermilion. Nice vermilion. Red. Oh, oh no, this is a red snapper. snapper. We've been catching so many vermilions. Beautiful. Okay, one of my favorite things about the offshore deal is the, just the variety down at the bottom. We've caught the porgies, the white snappers, right. the vermilion snappers, the red snapper, that tile the so tile far. fish. Some uh, trigger fish. Just a variety of things down there. Yeah, we've come out about 35 miles, we're on some natural bottom, we're trying to not target the red snapper today, but they're, they're gonna be out here too, you know, so we'll vent this fish, and get them back down to the bottom. Sounds like a plan, let's get that done quick. Gone, see ya. Look up there, look up there. Oh, There's there some, see it, something's floating in the water. Yeah, what do we got? Debris. Some debris. Looks like a giant tarp. Bunch of triple tail, bunch of triple tail. The Captain's Log with Captain Jonathan Moss, presented by Florida Fishing Products, is brought to you by Florida Fishing Products, Icon Coolers, Denko Flyers, Temple Fork Outfitters, Skinny Water Culture, and go castaway fishing charters. Looks like a giant tarp. Bunch of triple tail. Bunch of triple tail. He's chasing it. He's after it. He's after it. Come on, come on. Triple tail, baby. There you go. Look at, look at him following it. Look at him following it. He ain't a giant, but that's awesome, dude. Seeing that debris floating there. Sight fishing triple tail out in the Gulf of Mexico. Man, I wish I uh, <laughs> should have brought my fly rod today, boys. Yep. Right. Sweet. Little triple tail right there. Well, oh, let him go. Let him go. Let him grow. Forget I'm chasing him. I just let him eat. Oh. There we go, there we go. Look at us, doubled up, triple tail. <laughs> doubled up, nice work. Yeah, dude. Yeah. So much fun, boys. They may be little, but they're fun.
Got him. Going the right direction. See you, buddy. Bit bigger. Look at cane pole fishing triple tail. Cane pole fishing triple tail. I got an Amico Jack. There's a bigger triple tail. He ain't a giant, but he's the bigger one, biggest one I've caught. Triple tail, it's prehistoric, really pretty, really tasty. This one's undersized. This one I want to talk about. Look here, it's gill plate. See that right there? That will tear you apart. So when you're handling a triple tail, it's hard as a rock, sharp as a blade. Keep that in mind so that you don't get stuck, because that will hurt you. All right, see you later, buddy. So pretty. Love your markings. Tell your mama we're around here. See ya. Get him, he got it, he ate it. There he is. You got that triple tail? Nice, dude. Nice fish. Well, that one looks like it's close to a keeper, brother. It is, it's pretty close. Lift him up, John, check him out, see how big he is. Well done, dude, he ate that thing. My hands are so slick from all the fish we've caught. She's right, a keeper. Man. Well Get done, brother. We went through a bunch of shorts, finally got the one we're looking for. Here we go, good job, man. Yes, sir. Nice job in catching them. Yeah. Excellent. Nice work. And now, the conservation challenge with Captain Jonathan Moss. Today I want to challenge you to look at your household cleaning supplies and your personal hygiene products. I want you to look to see three ingredients. See if you find them. Phthalates, triclosan, and phosphates. You see, these three ingredients are very difficult for our wastewater management systems to filter out, and they end up into our lagoons, our rivers, our lakes, and our ocean. These three ingredients are found in almost every single household cleaning product. My wife brought this to my attention and we've made the switch. There are companies and products that you can buy that doesn't cost any more, that eliminates those three ingredients and makes it safer for not only our people, but our fish and our waterways. Check them out, consider making the switch and it makes a huge difference. There's a fish. Fish on dude. Any size? I bumped up to a bigger rod. I know we're marking some bigger fish down there. Uh huh. But these little ones, when they eat it, man, it's with that hard, heavier rod, you just don't feel that bite. Yeah. It's not it's as sensitive. It's a real, really, really, really light bite, like a really finicky bite. So that soft tip rod's really nice compared to the rod that's got a little bit more backbone to it. Where goes your first one? Another one of them porgies. There you go. White snapper. Man, these things are beautiful. Absolutely incredibly beautiful. Oh, oh, got one. Get them. You stay where you're at. I'm gonna throw this one in the box. Come on, come on, buddy. Crank them. Good to see you catching fish for once, man. You're yeah. Just mating and rigging. And just rigging seven days a week and the offshore boats always rigging in a cockpit and the inshore boat, I'm just, getting people and putting them on bonefish permit tarpon makes a bag of tricks a lot of mangrove snappers mutton snappers 
Well, it's good to see you pulling on the fish for once, This dude. feels good. It feels good. I'm not going to lie to you. It feels good. I'm doubled up. Oh, got two. I'm going to swing them in. Watch yourself. Awesome, bro. Well done, my friend. Look at that. All right. Chicken rigging. Chicken rigging. Nice work. Nice work, Rex. Putting us on some nice fish. Rex is back there. Rex is back there being a ninja that's doing work. There you go. I mean, as soon as it hit the bottom, as soon as it hit the bottom. How deep did we fish, man? Here it comes. Beautiful vermilion. Look at that guy. I mean, as soon as it hit the bottom, Rex, as soon as it hit the bottom, yeah, these vermilion snappers, these are uh, real pretty fish. They got little gold. Yeah, I don't think I've ever noticed the golden before. Yeah, it helps you tell what type of fish it is, you know, especially for a novice angler that may not know the difference between a red snapper and a vermilion snapper. You have the gold specks and the eye color is different and the nose is rounded. Yeah. Yeah. You know, a common size, two to four pounds. Good fish. Real good eating fish. One of my real good table fare. Purdy. Time for the box. Awesome. Get in there with your friends. Come on, come on, Mike. Get him off the bottom. Get him off the bottom. Come on, bro. It's the one we've been looking for, bro. Porgy. This is the one we've been looking for. A croaker, excuse me. He's coming up. Here he comes. Big red snapper. Oh, big no, mangrove. No, no. Big mangrove. Big mangrove. Oh <laughs> Got him. Yes, sir. <laughs> Look at that mango there, dude. Well done, bro. That thing is, dude, that's that's a 10 pounder, dude. Nice one. Biggest mango ever caught. I never caught one that big before. You hear me? I ain't never caught no mango that big from down in the Keys. That's the biggest mango I've ever caught. Woohoo! That is a chunk of a fish. That dude. is a big mango. That's the biggest mango I've ever caught. Hey, listen, if I'm gonna trade a big grouper for something, uh -huh. it's gonna be a big fat mango like that. That is a serious, beautiful black snapper. You call them black, black snapper, snapper. we yeah. call them gray snapper, mangoes. This guy on ice. Oh, what a day, boys. Good way to end it with that nice uh, mango. All right. Killer day. Awesome day. Nice, nice fish nice in the work. box. Yeah, I man. Couldn't tell you how many uh, Outstanding day. In we'll have to count when we get in and clean them all up. Let's head in before uh, it gets any later and go grab some supper. All right, sounds good to me. All right, boys. All right. All right. And now, the Tackle Box Tip with Captain Jonathan Loss, presented by Icon Coolers. One huge important piece of advice my dad taught me was having the right tool for the job. And the same goes with fishing. I love fishing equipment and tackle and gear. I'm a fishing nerd when it comes to all that stuff. And one tool that I use every single day are my Danco pliers. Danco is known for making premium pliers. They even named them premiums. But more than just pliers, Danko has a wide range of tools for you to use on your boat. From floating landing nets to bait nets for the inshore side or offshore. And if you're going offshore, crimpers, dehookers for those toothy critters, fish grippers if you need that, wide range of bait knives and fillet knives. If there is a tool for fishing, Danco makes it. One tool that I use every time I go offshore is the gaff, but I also bring this with me if the family and I decide to go to the sandbar, we wanna do some snorkeling. This can be used, put your dive net onto your gaff, stick it in the rod holder, and you're good to go. So many different things you can do with all of these different tools from Danco. Check them out at your local fishing tackle shops. 
One of my favorite parts about fishing offshore is the variety of species you can catch. Not knowing what's lurking on the wreck, reef, or broken bottom keeps me coming back for more. And something I was reminded of today was that it is crucial while out on the water to pay attention to your surroundings. It's not every day that you find a tarp floating out on the ocean, holding hundreds of triple tail. And if we weren't focused, the grand prize would have literally floated on by. I love how mysterious the ocean is. It is fierce one minute and calm the next, ever changing and demanding respect. That's all part of the allure of fishing offshore.